Hey, good evening. It's uh, Friday, April 12th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. I'm going to continue answering some of your questions from uh, last week's uh, Q&A Friday. Just love all the questions that we got. I've got two questions tonight, but of the similar theme. One is Karen's, who just started recently uh, looking at the channel. Thanks so much, Karen, for uh, finding us and uh, coming back. She says, I did not realize that I did not stumble upon your channel, but it was placed in my view. Please expand on the power to change the attitudes and even conscious, unconscious habits. And this was in the video about not grieving the spirit and how we can by our actions and attitudes, but they're not thinking about the things of God, actually grieve him because we're not involved in the things that the Spirit of God wants us to be in, that the book of Ephesians has been telling us to be engaged in. And then very similar, I hope they're pronouncing your name right, Lee says, I have a question. How do we come back to our first love, Jesus, if we have fallen out of love with him? And it's that same spirit for both of them. Are we pursuing Christ the way he wants us to pursue him? Are we taking him at his word? It really comes down to, are we going to follow the ways of the spirit or the way of the flesh? Paul says in Galatians 5, So I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. The flesh wants both of you to not know Karen Lee wants both of you to not know what it means to trust him. The enemy does not want you, and the flesh does not want you to fall back in love with Jesus and to embrace him. The enemy doesn't want you to uncover the hidden attitudes of the heart or even our unconscious habits. He wants them to stay just like they are. But God has a game plan to change that. So he says, I say, walk by the Spirit. And I'm going to put it up on the screen for you right now, a picture of some grapes. And these are all aspects of the Spirit's fruit. So l listen to what we're saying here. What, what, I'm sorry, what, what Paul is saying. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against those, these things, there are no law. If you just saw these luscious grapes and didn't touch them, just admired them, they would have no value to you. But if you eat their succulent beauty and keep coming back to it, then you can realize the power of the fruit. It's the same way with the fruit of the Spirit. If you'll make your prayer about pursuing the Spirit's fruit and ask God to give you a passion for these things and make it unrelenting and see how these things work themselves out in the relationship of your life, that is one, I think, one really positive way to rekindle your love for Christ and His Word and to uncover the things that are plaguing us and keeping us from Christ. Just to, I've got some videos and playlists on the fruit of the Spirit, and I'd love if you all check that out. But I'm just going to go over these nine qualities very quickly, just to give us a taste of what God's calling us to. Love is willingly giving willingly whatever I have to meet someone else's need. I'm passionate about that. Joyfulness is believing that God will work all things together for my good so that I never have to despair. I can be joyful even when I'm sad. Joy is different than happiness. Happiness is an all-consuming thing. But joy, you can, be, you can know joy and still know sorrow. They are meant to coexist together. Joy is what sustained us, sustains us. Peace. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but knowing and trusting God in the middle of conflict. 
patience. Patience is accepting problems without complaining, trusting that God will be there for me and care for me. Therefore, patience is living in the expectation of God's care. Kindness is being thoughtful and quick to do good to others without the expectation of getting reward for ourselves. The opportunity to care as we've been cared for by the love of God should be all the motivation we need. Goodness. We want to be overflowing with the goodness that God has so richly given to us. We want to give that to others. Faithfulness. I want to be dependable so that others can trust what I say and rely on me. Gentleness. It's using only the strength that is required for the force that is appropriate to do what we're called to do. Gentleness is power. Jesus was gentle. Moses was gentle. Because they did what God wanted them to do, using only the force that God called them to. And then finally, self-control. And that's not some rigid self-discipline thing. Self-control is the ability to say no to my wrong desires and yes to what God wants me to do. If you'll take those nine wonderful aspects of the Spirit's fruit, bring them before the Lord in prayer, make it a matter of just daily passion. Lord, I struggle with things, these things, but I know that this is what you want because this is the Spirit's fruit. This, there are many things in life that are uncertain, but we can be certain that God wants us to pursue the fruit of the Spirit. The many wonderful books and commentaries written on this. As I said, I've got some videos and playlists on this. You can look it up under uh, Fruit of the Spirit. But least and Karen, what I would recommend you do is go before God and ask Him to give you a fervent passion for displaying His fruit, the fruit of His Spirit, in your everyday walk. And there's so much to pray on there, there's so much to look for. Again, please get back in touch with me, ask some more questions, be more specific, check out some playlists, like I said, other materials. But is the spirit of the flesh, are we gonna walk by the spirit? Or are we gonna walk according to what we want? And by listing the spirit of the spirit for us in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, God has graciously given us the way to walk. And that's, thank you for these great questions. And that's the thought for this night. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.